Hi again, it's uh, time for collective worship. How the weeks fly by when you're having fun. I hope you're all okay. I know you're all at home or most of you are at home now because we're in the third lockdown. But I hope you're being able to learn at home and do some fun things as well. Perhaps spend some time with your brothers and your sisters and your mum and your dad. You'll be thinking about your place in the family a little bit later. But first, we're going to start with our words. Can you remember them? I hope you can and uh, you can join in with me as I say them. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Today's story is a story called The Centurion's Servant. It's a story about power and about helping one another. So as I read it, I want you to be thinking as well as listening. So that's quite a tricky thing to do, isn't it? And the thing I want you to be thinking about is what is power to you? What is power to you? What does it mean to you? Okay, so here's the story. The centurion's servant. I wonder if anybody knows what a centurion is first. Let's have a think about that. Here's a centurion. He was a soldier in the Roman army and it was the Romans who were in charge of the land where Jesus lived. This wasn't just an ordinary soldier though. This man was in charge. He was in command of a hundred other soldiers. The first part of his title, son, means a hundred in French. And that's how we know he had a hundred soldiers to look after, all doing as he would ask them and tell them. He was a man who had an awful lot of power. So now we know what a centurion is and what he does uh, for a job. Let's have a listen to the story. Now you can see there's the centurion in the middle. He's on his knees. So we'll find out in a minute why he's doing that. And this is Jesus. You can see him there. And then we've got some other people here standing around him. And right up at the top here, we've got the centurion's house a little bit further away. So let's let's listen to the story and find out what happens. The Roman centurion stood before his soldiers. There were a hundred in all, each and every man sworn to do whatever the centurion commanded. Fetch my sword, he ordered. Yes, sir, right away, sir, shouted one of the soldiers, and he was off in a flash. Fetch my shield, he added. Yes, sir, right away, sir, and another soldier ran off as well. Forward, march, he shouted, once everything was ready. Yes, sir, right away, sir, answered each and every man. And they marched off together through the streets of Capernaum. The centurion was used to giving orders and he was used to being obeyed, not only by his men, but by the people of Capernaum as well for the Romans were in charge of that city and all the land where Jesus lived. A land they had taken by force and now ruled with a cruel hand. One day the centurion went home to hear some bad news. His servant was ill, unable to move and in great pain. The centurion felt sorry for his servant, but for all his power there was nothing he could do no order he could give to make the pain go away for his servant. So the centurion went to see Jesus. He'd heard that Jesus made sick people well, and so his request was simple. Help me, sir, he said. My servant is terribly, terribly ill. The people standing around Jesus wondered what he would do. The centurion and his soldiers had bullied them and stolen from them and pushed them around. 
would Jesus do for this man what he had for so many others? But there was no question in Jesus's mind. He had taught his followers to love everyone, even their enemies. How could he do any less? I will go and I will heal him, he said. And then the centurion said something that surprised them all. No, no, he said. And could it be that he was remembering all the cruel things he had done? I do not deserve to have you visit my house, but I do know this. I am a man with power and authority. I tell my soldiers to fetch this and they do it, saying, yes, sir, right away, sir. I tell them to fetch something else and the answer is the same. Yes, sir, right away, sir. And when I order them to march, they obey. Yes, sir, right away, sir. You have power too, Jesus. Power over us. So all you need to do is give the order and I know that my servant will be well. Jesus turned to those around him amazed. This man trusts me. He really does. I haven't found this kind of trust even among our own people. I'm telling you the truth when I say that people just like this man, people from all over the world, will one day be a part of all that God is doing. But because they do not trust me, some of our own people will miss out. Then he turned to the centurion and said, go, all that you hope for will happen. And at that very hour, the centurion's servant was healed. Yes, sir. Right away, sir, said the centurion. I wonder what you were thinking about when I was reading the story then. I wonder what you were thinking about power. Who has power? And what is power? And how should we use power? The centurion in our story had power, didn't he? He could tell people what to do. I wonder if there's anybody in your life, maybe somebody at home or maybe somebody at school, who tells you what to do and they expect you to do it. Have a think for a moment. When I was a little girl, it was my mum and dad. And sometimes my brothers, they would try to tell me what to do and they wanted me to do it. And sometimes I would and sometimes I wouldn't. And then as I got older, it was people that I worked with. Like the manager of the pub where I was a waitress. He told me what to do. He was the one with the power and I had to do it. There's lots of different sorts of power though, aren't there? Did the centurion use his power wisely or nicely? He didn't really, did he? If you listen to the story, he had done some bad things. He bullied the people in Capernaum. He'd stolen from the people in Capernaum. And what else? Oh, he'd pushed them around. Maybe not he himself exactly, but his soldiers had. And it was him who was giving the orders. So he was just as bad, even if he didn't touch the people. So he wasn't really using his power very well, was he? He was making the people he had power over even feel really bad. So let's look at Jesus's power. Does Jesus have power? Yes, he did. He had lots of power. He had power that brought people to listen to him. He had power over illnesses. Not everybody who went to Jesus was healed. But everybody who went to Jesus had something new happen in their life. That was his power to give love and a fresh start to everybody who went to him for help. And he has power now, doesn't he, with the centurion's servant. And does Jesus use his power wisely? 
Does he use it to make people's lives better? Yes, every single time. He might not make you better from your illness, but he makes you feel better inside. He gives you peace and he enables you to know yourself to be loved. So what do you think Jesus would say to us about how we use our power? Do we think it's a good thing to bully people, to steal from them and to push them around? Definitely not. Do we think it's a good thing to look after people, to love them, and to help them as much as we can. Yes, most definitely. You might think you don't have much power, but you know, the best power is loving people, is helping people and is caring for them. So even if you're the youngest person in your house, even if you're the smallest person, or even if you're the eldest, child in the house and you still probably think maybe you don't have very much power, you can't do much to help. There's always something that you can do from picking up your toys, making your bed, doing as your mum and dad ask you to do. You could even try that broccoli every now and again. You have the power to make your life good and to make other people's lives good just by smiling at them and loving them, thinking about them. And whilst we're all a little bit separate in our own homes, praying for them too. So let's have a little bit of silence. I'm going to sh show you the candle again. And as you watch the candle, I want you to think of someone that you would like to care for, someone you would like to pray for, because that's the power we all have. And to finish with a prayer, if you want to make it your prayer, you can say Amen at the end. Dear God, thank you that you give us all your love. Thank you for the power of your love in us. And thank you for the power of the love in us that we can give to others. Help us to use the power we have wisely. Help us to be kind, to care for people and to help them to feel better. Amen. And we'll finish with our blessing. May the strength of God be in your hearts. May the peace of God be with everyone and may the love of God be between us all. Amen.